Who is like crying in the streets for bread? Oh, King, it's the beggar. Why does he cry for bread? Oh, King, he cries for bread in order that he may fill his belly. I do not like the sound of his voice. It will not be very much. Send him away. Oh, King, he has been sent away. If that is so, then why do I hear his voice? Oh, King, he has been sent away many times, yet each time that he is sent away, he returns again, crying louder than he did before. He is very unwise to annoy him on such a warm day. He must be punished for his indolence. Use the lash on him. Oh, King, it has been done. Then bring out the spades. Oh, King, the guards have pointed their swords many times, driving him away from the palace gates. But it is of no way. And then bind him and gag him if necessary. If need be, cut his tongue. I do not like the sound of the fellow's voice. It annoys me very much. Behold, O King, all your commands were obeyed even yesterday. That is impossible. For a man that has no tongue cannot cry out in the streets for a piece of bread now, can he? Behold, he can't. It has grown louder. Hi. Men are never more than one tongue in a lifetime. In fact, you have more than one tongue. It's treason. If it is treason to have more than one tongue, O King, then is this beggar surely guilty of treason? The punishment for treason is death. See to it that the beggar is slain. And do not find me so languidly, I am exceedingly warm. Behold, a great illustrious king, all your commands were obeyed even yesterday. Do not jest with thy king. If I jest, then there is truth in the jest. Even yesterday, O King, as I have told thee, the beggar, which you now hear is crying aloud in the streets, was slain by soldiers with a sword. To go see bread. For soon, men that have been slain with a sword do not go about in the streets crying for a piece of bread now, do they? But this they do, in that fashion does this beggar. Why, he's but a man. Surely he cannot have more than one life in a lifetime. Listen to the tale of which happened yesterday. I am listening. Thy soldiers smote this beggar for crying aloud in the streets for bread, and his wounds were already healed. They cut out his tongue, but he immediately grew another. They slew him, but he is now alive. Wow. Ah. That is a tale which I cannot understand at all. Oh, King, it may be well. I cannot understand what thou sayest either. Oh, King, it may be well also. Thou art speaking now in riddles. I do not like riddles. They confuse my brain. Behold, O great and lustrous king, if I speak in riddles, it is because a riddle has come to pass. Bread! Bread! Please, give me some bread. He is crying out again, and his voice seems to be louder than it was before. Hunger is as sweet to the lungs, okay? His lungs, I imagine, are quite well fed indeed. <laughs> but alas, his stomach is quite empty. That is not my business. Should I not perhaps bring him a crust from the window? No. <clears throat> to feed a beggar is always food. Every crumb that is given to a beggar is an evil seed, from which springs another fellow like him. Bread! <sighs> bread! Please, give me some bread. He seems very hungry over me. <laughs> yes, so I should judge. Not let me bring him a piece of bread. Your ears must pay the debts of your hand. A king can have no debts. Oh, that is true, king. Uh, even though the noise of the fellows begging must annoy you greatly. It does. Doubtless, he craves only a small crust of bread from your table, and he will be content. Why, doubtless, he craves only to be king, and he'd be very happy indeed. Do not be hard, the king. There are wise and just. This fellow is exceedingly hungry. You do not command me to bring him a piece from the window? My commands I have given thee already. See to it that the beggar is driven away. And do not stop finding me. I am exceedingly warm. <laughs> the last for king is driven away. He will return back again even as he did before. <sighs> that is true. But I do not like his voice. It still troubles me. Once are fed with hunger, the truth they're quite strong. Well, propose a remedy to weaken them. A remedy? Okay. That's what I said, a remedy. And do not stop fighting. I am warm. <laughs> a 
across the red jump from the other window for Sue's will come around it. I already said I wouldn't give him bread. If I gave him across the bread today, he would be just as hungry again tomorrow, and my troubles would be as great as they were before. <laughs> it's joking. Your mind is surely filled with great learning. Therefore, some other remedy must be found. A king of world, uh, your illustrious mother of world, your illustrious mother is sure in minerals of wisdom. Now let me consider. Thou sayest, he does not suffer pain. Therefore he cannot be tortured. And he will not die. Therefore it is useless to kill him. Now let me consider. I must think another way. Perhaps as small because. Ha! I have it. I myself will command him to stop. Okay. Send the beggar here. Okay. <laughs> a rather fancy old fellow will stop his bawling when I command him to. Okay, you will show the the beggar into the royal chambers? Yes. Go outside and tell this beggar that the king desires his presence. Great and illustrious king, you will surely not do the thing. You will surely not soil thy royal eyes by looking at such a filthy creature. My ears have been soiled enough already. Therefore, go now and do as I have commanded thee. How oh, great and illustrious king, you will I surely said go! <laughs> well, the fancy will fall stop his boy when I command him to. And with fancy, he will be pretty frightened when he knows that the king. Desires his presence. Okay, here's the beggar. Ah, a magnificent sight, to be sure. Now, art thou the beggar who has been crying aloud in the streets for bread? Art thou the king? I am the king. <laughs> It is not proper for a beggar to ask a question of a king. Speak only as thou art spoken to. Do thou likewise. Now, I have summoned thee here to speak to thee concerning a very grave matter. Thou art a beggar, I understand, who often cries loud and speaks for bread. Now, the sound of thy voice annoys me greatly. Therefore, I decree, do not beg anymore. I don't understand. I said, do not beg anymore. I don't understand. <sighs> the king has commanded thee not to beg in the streets for bread anymore, for the noise of thy voice is garbage in his ears. <laughs> An excellent flower of speech, pin in thy buttonhole. Now, thy ears, I see, are in need of a bath even more than in thy body. <laughs> I said, do not beg anymore. I don't understand. Heavens, he's deafer than a stone wall. A king, he cannot be deaf, for he understood me quite easily when I spoke to him in the street. Art thou deaf? Canst thou hear what I am saying to thee now? Alas, I can hear every word perfectly. The impudence! Thy tongue shall be cut off for this. To cut out his tongue is useless. He will ruin another. No matter shall be cut out anyone. Now, I have ordered thee not to beg any more in the streets. What meanest thou by saying thou dost not understand? The words of thy mouth I can hear perfectly, but their noise is only a foolish tinkling in my ears. <laughs> oh, wait. A lash will tinkle thy height if thou dost not cure thy tongue of impudence. I. Thy king hath ordered thee not to beg any more in the streets. Signify, therefore, that thou wilt obey the orders of, orders of thy king by quickly touching thy forehead thrice to the floor. That is impossible. <laughs> Come, <laughs> it's not safe to taste the patience of the king for too long. His patience is truly great, but he loses his most wondrously quickly. Wherefore should I touch my forehead to the floor? In order to seal thy promise to thy king. But I have made no promise. 
Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho! He has made no promise, neither has he any king. <laughs> <coughs> ah, the king, I commanded thee to touch thy forehead to the floor. Do that, and thou shalt walk away from this palace, a free man. Refuse, and you will be sorry within the hour that thy father ever came within twenty pieces of thy mother. <laughs> I have ever lamented that he did, for to be born into this world a beggar is the more unhappy thing of any that I know. Unless it is to be born a king. Thy tongue, of a truth, is too lively for thy health. Touch thy forehead now to the floor, and promise solemnly that thou wilt never beg in the streets again. And hurry. It is wise to do as the king commands thee. His patience is near an end. Do not be afraid to sow the floor with thy forehead. I will graciously forgive thee that. I said it is not wise to keep the king waiting. Well? Well? Thou commands me, thou, a common beggar from the street, commands me, a king, to remove my crown from my forehead and throw it from yonder window into the street. That is what I said. Why dost thou not know I can have thee slain for such words? No, thou canst not have thee slain. The spirit of my soldiers are strong against my body. We shall see if they are. We shall see. Okay, it is indeed true. It is as even as he has told you. I have required thee to remove thy crown from thy forehead. If so be, thou wilt throw it from yonder window into the street. My voice will cease to annoy thee any more. But if thou refuse, thou wilt wish that it's never had any crown at all. For thy days will be filled with the terrible boding, and thy nights will be full of horrors, even as a ship is full of rats. Why, this is insolence! This is treason! I ask thee, wilt thou throw thy crown from your window? Why, this is high treason! I ask thee again, wilt thou throw thy crown from your window? <laughs> Perhaps it would be wise to humor him a thing. After you throw that crown away, I can go outside and bring it back to you again. <laughs> well? 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 No. I will not throw my crown from that window. Not from any other window. What? Shall I obey the orders of a bear? Never. Truly, that is spoken by a king. Thou art a king. Thou wouldst prefer to lose that head of yours rather than that silly circle of silver that so foolishly took the bonnet. But it is well. Thou art a king. Thou couldst not prefer otherwise. Stop him! Seize him! Does he think he can get off so easily with this impudence? Stop him! One of thy servants cannot stop me. Neither can ten thousand of them do me any harm. I am stronger than a mountain, and I am stronger than the sea. We shall see about that. We shall see about that. Hold him, I say! Quick! Why must thou not call the guards? He must be put in chains! I am stronger than a mountain, and my words are more fearful than a hurricane. One breath of my mouth, I could blow over this whole house. This servant of thine cannot even touch me. We shall see. 
shall see about that. We shall see about that quick. Oh, I just don't want to call the guards. I will not harm thee now. I will only cry aloud in the streets, begging for bread and to fill my belly. One day, I will not be so kind to thee. On that day, my mouth will be filled with rushing wind, and my arms will become as strong as steel. Now we go! Oh, that is All the bones and the body, I will snap between my fingers. I will be upon a large drum and the body head will be my drumstick. I will not do these things now. But one day, I will do them. So, when my voice sounds in my ears again, begging for bread, remember what I told you. Remember, <laughs> oh king, and be afraid. After him, after him! This is the king of us, he's after him! He must be come. Oh, King, I, I cannot seem to move. Quick then, call the guards! He must be caught, and he must be put in chains. King, I cannot seem to call them. Oh, art thou dumb? <gasps> bread, <laughs> bread, please give me some bread. I'm afraid of a bear. Ah! 